All right, guys, my name is Shervin. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about GICs and whether or not they are actually worth it. Now, for those of you who don't know, GICs are guaranteed investment certificates. Essentially, they are investments where your initial capital is not at risk. So whatever money you invest is not going to be at risk and you're not going to be losing that money. That's a guarantee that you're given with this type of investment. Now, generally speaking in investments, the lower your risk, the lower your return will be as well. So essentially GICs are low risk, low reward types of investments where you put your money with specific banks or specific financial institutions. They put it away for a couple of years. And then after that, you get your initial capital back with a little bit of return on top of it. And you're guaranteed to get both of these. You're never going to lose your money with this type of investment. So the real question is, are the low rewards worth the risk-free type of investments that we're getting with these specific GICs. So if you watch till the end of this video, you're gonna find out whether GICs are worth it or not in general. You're gonna find out about different GIC programs that different banks offer in Canada. And you're also going to find out what other investments you could look into if you're someone who doesn't really know how to invest and you're just looking at GICs because you don't have any other options available to you. And as always, if you enjoy this video, make sure to smash that subscribe button down below and join the family. I make new videos about banking, personal finance, investments, all the time. And by subscribing to the channel, you get to see all those videos right as they come out. Also, every subscriber makes a big difference for me as a YouTuber, and I really appreciate the support. Now, with that said, let's jump right into GICs. And the first problem that I have with GICs is that the return is just way too low. For example, if you look at credible banks like CIBC, Scotiabank, RBC, BMO, all these banks offer really low returns on their GIC products. So for example, the best products that they have is the five-year non-cashable GIC that these banks offer, and they only offer 1.55% return on investment on these products. So essentially, you put your money with these banks for five years, you're not allowed to touch it, you're not allowed to withdraw any of that money, and then after the five years is over, you get 1.55% on your investment per year, which is really low, specifically if you compare to some other bank accounts that are offered today in Canada. For example, if you've watched my video on the best checking account in Canada, I talked about the EQ Bank Savings account, where you receive 1.25% on your money without having to invest any of it or without having to lock any of it in. It's just a bank account where you put your money, you can withdraw anytime you want, you can pay your bills anytime you want, and you are not paying any fees whatsoever for that bank account as well. And you're still getting 1.25% on your money, which is pretty much the same as what you're getting on these GIC products. As well as this, these rates are even lower than the inflation rate. So the inflation rate on average is about 2% per year which means that when you're only getting 1.55% return on your investment, you're essentially still losing about 0.45% of your money's worth every single year. This is because every single year, that money is losing about 2% of its value due to inflation, and you're only recovering about 1.55% of it. So you're still essentially losing 0.45% every single year, which is not what we're looking for at all when we're investing our money. And of course, the other big problem with GICs is the opportunity cost of not being allowed to touch any of that money for the agreed upon term. So let's say if you put your money into a five-year GIC, you're not allowed to touch any of that for the next five years, which means that for the next five years, anytime an opportunity comes for a good investment, you're not allowed to take advantage of it with your money because your money is locked up in a GIC. So really, whichever way you look at it, GICs are not investments that are worth your time. In fact, the only GIC investment that I was able to find in Canada where the return rates were not insultingly low was the TD GIC investment where they offer 10% per three years on a three-year term with your GIC. So essentially, whatever you put into your GIC and you hold for three years, you get 10% return on that. That is an average of 3.2% per year on your investment, which isn't all that bad and is at least above inflation. That said though, you can definitely find better investments where you can get higher returns. So what if you're someone who doesn't really know how to invest their money and you were really only looking at GICs because you're not sure where else you could find good investments with good returns for low risks to your capital? Well, if you're someone like that, the best option for you would be to look at index funds. Now, index funds or ETFs are essentially investments that bundle together little pieces of every big company that is doing really well in the market. So essentially, they go up with the market and come down with the market. Now, even though the market could go up or down at any given moment, 
in the long term, the market always trends upwards, which means that if you put your investments into index funds and you hold them for a long period of time, you're going to get a good amount of return on those investments and your risks are very, very minimal in the long term, that is. Now, if you put your money into a broad index fund, for example, the S&P 500, you're going to be getting an average of 7% per year on your investments. Now, again, keep in mind, this is an average. So it doesn't mean every single year you're going to be getting 7% on your investment. Some years it's going to be higher than that. Some years it's going to be lower than that. Some years your investment might even go down in value. But in the long term, it averages out to being about 7% per year. So if you're willing to invest for the long term, ETFs and index funds are the best option to go to. So if you are someone who is looking into investing into a GIC, I would suggest forgetting about that completely and instead focusing on investing your money into a broad index fund, for example, the S&P 500, where you will be getting a much better return on your investment per year on average and your risks are still very minimal. So you're not going to be losing all your capital as long as you hold for a long period of time. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Now, if you have any questions about any of these investments that I talked about, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I always respond to every single question and I'm always happy to help you guys out. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.